Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Faith Walk. My name is Will Wilson, and I'm one of the elders at Church Street Church of Christ, and we appreciate you taking time out of your morning to join us for this morning devotional. We recently received the edition of the Reader's Digest for this month. My wife and I enjoy looking at it. And uh, in there, there was an article called The Worst Place to Live in the United States. The distinction for that uh, fell to Red Lake County, Minnesota. So in case, uh, here's a bit of trivia for you, in case you didn't know this, there are 3,007 counties in the United States. If you add some parishes and boroughs, uh, onto that, you end up with about 3,143 different places that could have gained that distinction, but it fell to Red Lake County, Minnesota. It uh, said that it was selected because when it's hot, it's hot, and when it's cold, it's cold, and not a lot of uh, amenities that uh, I guess we all have grown to expect and enjoy. And for that reason, it was designated as uh, the worst place to live in the United States. When the people of, of Red Lake County found out about that distinction, they were up in arms. They actually reached out to the author of this article and invited him to come there. Interestingly, uh, he now lives there in Red Lake County, Minnesota. Uh, based upon his visit and and uh, finding the tender heart of the people there. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we know comes from very humble beginnings in Bethlehem, um, and all that's chronicled for us in Luke chapter 2. Uh, it's prophesied as well in Micah uh, at chapter 5 in verse 2, where it says, But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, Though you are little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall come forth to me the one to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth are from old, from everlasting. So with that, uh, that prophecy, we know Christ was born in Bethlehem, but he spent the bulk of his life in, in Nazareth after after they uh, went to Egypt for a period of two to three years, when they came back, they set, Joseph and Mary settled in Nazareth. And we know uh, some just some small glimpses that uh, when Christ was 12, they sojourned from Nazareth to Jerusalem to observe some of the feasts that were commanded. And... Uh, Evidently, Joseph and Mary were very comfortable with the people that they lived around, possibly brothers and sisters and, and, and good friends, because we know that when they went to leave to go return uh, from Jerusalem to Nazareth, that they went a day's journey before they realized Christ wasn't with them. Uh, and so I'm sure they felt like, well, he's with his friends, he's with his cousins, and uh, so they had to turn around and go back and get him. So obviously Nazareth wasn't a bad place to raise uh, someone, and, and Joseph and Mary uh, felt comfortable there. Uh, the, the Bible chronicles for us that uh, Christ uh, grew to his maturity there uh, before he started his, his ministry. Uh, but interestingly, in John chapter 1 at verse 46, when Philip has met Christ and he goes to talk to Nathaniel about him, Nathaniel makes this famous statement where he says, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And I know he's asking that in a rhetorical way because Nathaniel obviously has his mind made up that the answer to that is no, nothing can. But uh, the answer to that actually is, yes, Nathaniel, something can. He's king of kings. He's lord of lords. He will be your savior. He will uh, die on the cross for the sins of the world. And through him, we have the hope of life everlasting. I'm so grateful that something good can come out of Nazareth. And I'm glad that the folks in Red Lake County, Minnesota, have proven that perhaps their, their home is not the worst place in the United States. I want to ask you to join me in prayer. Dear God, we're grateful for Jesus Christ. We're grateful for his life, 
We're grateful, Father, for the, the village of Nazareth that helped to raise him and to make him our Lord and Savior through your providential guidance and through your miraculous power. Thank you, Father, that we have the opportunity of prayer, that we have forgiveness of sins, and we thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen.